and Jesus blood and righteousness on Christ the solid rock I stand all other ground is sinking sand my hope is Jesus the anchor of my soul this universe, the one who's in control. He saved me, and he will keep me till the end. The rock of my salvation, on Christ I will depend. My hope is Jesus. My hope is Jesus. When darkness hides my Savior's face, I rest on His unchanging grace. When faith is weak and doubt is strong, I still lift up salvation song. Soul, the ruler of this universe, the one who's in control. He saved me, and he will keep me till the end. The rock of my salvation, on Christ I will depend. My hope is Jesus. My hope is Jesus. Christ the solid rock I stand, all other ground is sinking sand. When he shall come with trumpet sound, On Christ I will depend. My hope is Jesus. He me, and He will keep me till the end. The rock of my salvation. On Christ I will depend. My hope is Jesus. My hope is Jesus. Hey, it's Pastor Jerry Burns, the pastor here at Kitchener Baptist Church. Our live stream is going to begin in just a moment. But I wanted to come on and just to welcome you to our service. Whether you're a first-time visitor or whether you're a regular attender, it is truly an honor to have you join us today. Our prayer is that God would use this service to bless your heart. We're not here to entertain. We're here that the Spirit could use this service to draw you closer to our Savior. And so get rid of any distractions that may pull your attention away from our worship service and make sure your Bible is handy and let's worship the Lord together. God bless you. Again, thank you for joining us and let's begin our live stream today.
evening. Welcome to our service this evening. 160 is how we're going to begin our service. Channels only. If you're able, let's stand together. We'll sing on that first verse, 160. for your love we thank you for your mercy and lord i pray you continue to do that work in our lives and only you can do draw us nearer to the lord jesus christ i pray that our hearts and our minds be open to what you would have to speak to us through your word this evening and you do that work which only you can do and lord again i also pray if there's someone here in our midst they don't know the lord jesus christ as a personal lord and savior i pray that this will be the night they come to trust in you for the forgiveness of their sins Again, I just pray all of the, everything that's said and done will bring honor and glory to your name. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. You may be seated, and we're going to sing the next hymn, hymn number 260. Hymn number 260 is my name written there. Thank you. 
Amen. We're going to hear an offertory. The ladies are going to play day by day and with each passing moment. Let's pray and ask God's blessing upon the offerings gathered this week. Lord, thank you so much for the wonderful opportunity that we have to worship you in song and also, Lord, to worship you in our giving. I pray, Lord, that your blessing would be upon both the gift and the giver and may both be used for the furtherance of your wonderful gospel. We pray it in Jesus' name. Amen. ladies for that special tonight let's take our hymn books once again and let's turn to number 445 no not one 445 Oh 
announcements tonight. Remember to continue to pray for each other. Continue to pray for Brother Spence. Uh, after having a stroke, he needs our prayers. I uh, wasn't feeling well today. And so let's continue to pray for him and others as well on beds of sickness. Uh, remember to keep them before the Lord in prayer. Remember, we're back to, of course, the service tonight, our six o'clock service. Uh, and so remember our Wednesday service at seven o'clock and then our morning service Sunday and then this service six o'clock on Sunday evenings. And then if you can help us on August the 15th uh, at 6 o'clock and the 18th, that's a Monday and a Thursday. We have some manual digging uh, to do uh, at the church, and many hands make light work. That's what they say. We're going to test that theory. Uh, if you can come and help us, that we would appreciate it um, as uh, we uh, just do some work here around the church. All right, let's look at our victory verse for this month, 1 Corinthians chapter 4 and verse number 5. We'll say the reference together, then let's say this verse. 1 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 5. Therefore, judge nothing before the time until the Lord come, who both will bring to light the hidden things of darkness and will make manifest the counsels of the heart. Then shall every man have praise of God. That's a wonderful verse in our Bible. And the context is the Apostle Paul writing to the church at Corinth. They're a carnal ch uh, church and they're criticizing the Apostle Paul, the minister of God. And Paul says, listen, God is going to deal with all of it. God knows the heart. And so until then, we keep on serving the Lord and keep doing what is right. Let's sing our chorus together. But until then, my heart will go on singing.
Amen. Next Sunday night, we're going to begin a new series called Building Below the Baseline. And so I hope that you'll come and be a part of that uh, as we study the Word of God together. Let's take our hymn books. We're going to turn to number 351. 351. If you're able to stand together, Jesus came me near the cross. We'll sing on that first verse. Wonderful singing tonight. Let's take our Bibles, if we could, and find the book of Deuteronomy, chapter 7. Deuteronomy, chapter 7, and we'll begin our reading in verse number 6. We thank the Lord for his blessings in our life, and one great blessing that we have is air conditioning. <laughs> That's a wonderful blessing. If you are cold, just come up here for a spell, and you'll warm right up, because it is, it is warm up here. <laughs> Deuteronomy chapter 7, verse number 6 is where we'll begin our reading. The Bible says, For thou art an holy people unto the Lord thy God. The Lord thy God hath chosen thee to be a special people unto himself, above all people that are upon the face of the earth. The Lord did not set his love upon you, nor chose you, because ye were more in number than any people, for ye were the fewest of all people. But because the Lord loved you, 
and because he would keep the oath which he had sworn unto your fathers, hath the Lord brought you out with a mighty hand and redeemed you out of the house of bondmen from the hand of Pharaoh, king of Egypt. Know therefore that the Lord thy God, he is God. He is the only God, the true God. Know therefore that the Lord thy God, he is God, the faithful God, which keepeth covenant and mercy with them that love him and keep his commandments to a thousand generations, and repayeth them that hate him to their face to destroy them. He will not be slack to him that hateth him, but will repay him to his face. Thou shalt therefore keep the commandments and the statutes, and the judgments which I command thee this day to do them. I want us to notice the expression that we find in verse 9 of this wonderful chapter. The Bible says that he is God. He is the faithful God. Let's pray together. Lord, thank you so much for your blessings and the opportunity that we have to uh, come together as your people. And Lord, to to open your word as our authority in our life and to learn and to grow and to draw closer to you. And I pray, Lord, that you would help us, each of us, Lord, to glean truth for our life. Lord, there are many things that are pressing upon our life, but Lord, I pray that we would separate our thoughts and focus only on your word, that we would be reminded tonight who you are, and this would be a comfort to us. So, Lord, I pray that you'd be glorified. I pray your word would be glorified in us. And we pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen. You know, it's hard to believe that we are already in the month of August. Where has 2022 gone? I mean, half the year has passed, and now we're on the home stretch coming into another Christmas season. <laughs> It won't be long I won't go there and talk about the snow. (laughs) At the end of the day, everything around us seems to be changing. I mean, is it just me? But it just seems like there is nothing constant. Things are rapidly changing in our world today. And sometimes change brings growth. That's a good thing. Sometimes change brings improvement in our life. But also there are times that change brings instability and fear of what would happen tomorrow. Everything seems to be changing. I mean, think of our world today and think of technology, how technology has changed. My first computer was a 386 with a dot matrix printer. There are some here that remember 8-tracks and cassettes. I remember cassettes and CDs. And all of these things are extinct now. I mean, they're, they're meaningless. Everything is streamed online. It's all in the cloud. <laughs> if Dropbox and Box.com and OneDrive mean anything to you, I mean, it's, it's just where our world has changed to. We We don't have any physical storage anymore. Everything is just wherever the cloud is. That's where it, there's a lot of data on the cloud. Socially, I mean, a man's word is rarely his bond. And we look at our society today and marital problems are the norm and video games and rock music has evolved. We we think of even religiously and how Many churches today, in, a, in a, an attempt to accommodate our world, uh, is teaching less doctrine, and they're changing and eliminating truths in the Bible so that they can be palatable to a world that is anti-God. Uh, and yet, in this hour of human history, with more change in one year that took place over hundreds of years in the past, I'm glad today that We serve a God who does not change. He does not change. A God who is faithful, and a God who is constant, and a God who is true. 
missionary statesman Hudson Taylor had complete trust in God's faithfulness. In his journal, he wrote these words, Our Heavenly Father is a very experienced one. He knows very well that his children wake up with a good appetite every morning. He sustained three million Israelites in the wilderness for 40 years. We do not expect he will send three million missionaries to China, but if he did, he would have ample means to sustain them all. Depend on it. He said God's work done in God's way will never lack God's supply. Now when we consider the truth that God is a faithful God, we must, we must understand as well that God never changes. Malachi chapter 3, verse 6, For I am the Lord, I change not. Therefore ye sons of Jacob are not consumed. Now in our text, in verse number 9, Moses here reminds us that the Lord thy God, He is God. He is the true God. He, He is the faithful God. You know, human nature cannot be relied on. But we can always trust in God who is faithful. The Bible says in Lamentations chapter 3, verse 21, the Bible says, this I recall to my mind. Therefore, I have hope. It is of the Lord's mercies that we are not consumed, because His compassions fail not. They are new every morning. Great is thy faithfulness. I read about the story of C.H. Spurgeon who was walking through an English countryside one day. And he was strolling along with his friend and the evangelist noticed a barn with a weather vane on the roof, and at the top of that weather vane were the words, God is love. And Spurgeon remarked to his friend, he said, listen, he says, I, I don't think that that's an appropriate message on that weather vane. He said, weather vanes are changeable. He said, but God is love. His love is constant. It never changes. And his friend said, I don't agree with you, Charles. <laughs> he says, you misunderstand the meaning. The sign is indicating a truth that regardless which way the wind blows, God is always love. He never changes. And no matter what is happening in our world today, no matter what is happening in the Middle East, no matter what is happening in Russia and Ukraine and in China, no matter what is happening all around our world, and, and even no matter what's happening in our own backyard, no matter the strife or the burdens that we face in our life, no matter which way the wind blows, we can be assured that God is a faithful God, and He never changes. There's a story told of three little girls who are enjoying an evening of play. And they started playing a game, counting their money. The object was to see who had the most money and whoever had the most pennies, they would be crowned the winner for the day. And so the first little girl, she counted 13 pennies. And the second girl as well, she counted 13 pennies. And the last little girl began to count and she only had 13 pennies like the other two but she counted 14. And the other girls argued with her and said, you gotta, you got to count again. And so once again, she counted those pennies and there were, they were only 13 pennies, but she insisted that she had 14 pennies. And finally, they asked her, how can you say that you have 14 pennies when you only have 13? We counted 13 pennies. And she said, my father promised me another penny when he comes home from work today. And whatever my father promised me, it's mine at the moment of the promise. And that's the assurance that we can have in God. Because God never changes. We can trust him. We can trust him in our life. Let me give you some thoughts. Number one, he is faithful in his personality. He is faithful in his personality. The Bible teaches us that the very personality of God is reliable. 
The Bible says in verse 9, Know therefore that the Lord, uh, that the Lord thy God, he is God, the faithful God. Isaiah 46 verse 9 says, Remember the former things of old, for I am God, and there is none else. I am God, and there is none like me. When we think of the personality of God, we have to be aware that God is truthful. In other words, God always keeps his word. Psalm 119 verse 160 says, Thy word is true from the beginning, and every one of thy righteous judgment endureth forever. Now think about this for just a moment. If you're driving down the road and you see a sign, and that sign says, dangerous curve ahead. You really only have three choices to make. You can slow down and you can heed that sign. You could ignore it and just maintain your speed. Or you can defy it and accelerate. And says, listen, that sign, it may be for someone else, but it's not for me. I can make this turn. In fact, I can do better than that. I can make this turn going even faster than what I'm going now. And that's how people, that's their attitude to the Bible. There are those who listen to the Bible and obey it for their life. They don't trust their own feelings. They don't trust their own way or their own heart, but they understand that the Bible is truth and they apply it to their life. There are those who ignore it and they say, listen, it's not for me. And the uh, other people will do the opposite of what the Bible says. If this is what God says, I'm going to do the very opposite of what God says. The Bible says in John 14, verse 6, Jesus saith unto him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. The Bible says that Jesus is the way to heaven. There are those who ignore that wonderful truth. There are those who seek another way. Romans chapter 3, verse 4 says, God forbid, yea, let God be true, but every man a liar. As it is written that thou mightest be justified in thy sayings and mightest overcome when thou art judged. Deuteronomy chapter 32 verse 4 says, He is the rock, his way is perfect, for all his ways are judgment. A God of truth without iniquity, just and right is he. You see, God is truthful but also God is unchangeable, unchangeable. We talk about the, the immutability of God. Every good gift and every perfect gift is from above that cometh down from the Father of lights with whom is no variableness, neither shadow of turning. Listen, God is not like a yo-yo that changes his mind every moment. God is constant. He's always the same with whom is no variableness, neither shadow of turning. God is a faithful God. Not only is he faithful in his personality, but God is also faithful in his provision. The Bible says in verse number 8, but because the Lord loved you and because he kept the oath which he had sworn unto your fathers, have the Lord brought you out with a mighty hand and redeemed you out of the house of bondmen from the hand of Pharaoh, king of Egypt. You know, it has always been God's desire to meet the needs of his people. You know, the Lord told his disciples as they went into the world to preach the gospel to not be concerned about food and raiment and and don't let it consume you like the Gentiles, but understand that God understands you need these things and God will meet your needs. God understands that we have needs in our life. Exodus chapter 3, verse 13, the Bible says, And Moses said unto God, Behold, when I come unto the children of Israel and say unto them, The God of your fathers has sent me unto you, and they shall say to me, what is his name and what shall I say unto them? And God said unto Moses, I am that I am. 
And he said, Thus shalt thou say unto the children of Israel, I am have sent me unto you. Now this is a declaration of deity, but it is also a declaration of provision. God is the I am. He is the provider. He meets our needs. I am the light of the world. I am the door. I am the good shepherd. I am the resurrection and the life. I am the way, the truth, and life. I am the true vine. God is the I am. I am everything you need. God gives us provision for our physical needs. I hope you've been a Christian long enough to know and to see God work in your life to supply the physical needs that you've you've needed. We know the provision that God gave to his people in the wilderness. He gave manna, he gave water, he gave raiment. Their clothes would never wear out. That's a a great miracle for God to perform on on a kindergarten child in school, right? Your clothes will never wear out. That's a miracle right there. (laughs) And yet the Bible says that God met their needs. In Genesis chapter 8, verse 22, while the earth remaineth, seed time and harvest and cold and heat and summer and winter and day and night shall not cease. This planet annually produces food for our physical needs. And though the world will accredit that to Mother Nature, we as believers understand that this is God that does this. God is a faithful God, and God is meeting our needs. He's supplying what we need. There's a wonderful story of of Charles Spurgeon, and he was preaching one day on provision, God's provision in his life, and trusting God's provision as believers. And he used his grandfather as an illustration. He said that his grandfather had a large a large family and a a very small income. But his grandfather loved the Lord, and he would not give up preaching the gospel for anything, even for a crown. He was told, uh, he has told me often, Spurgeon said, how the Lord provided for him. He had a little farm to get his living upon it, and he had a cow that he used to give milk for his many children. And one day when he came up to the cow, it fell back with the staggers and died, and Grandmother said, James, what will God provide for the dear children now? What shall we do for milk? Mother, he said, God said he would provide, and I believe that he will send us 50 cows if it pleased him. It so happened that on that day, a number of gentlemen were meeting in London, persons whom his grandfather did not know, and they were sitting in as a committee for the distribution of money for poor ministers, and they had given it to all who had asked for it. My grandfather, Spurgeon Road, had never asked for anything. He liked to earn his own money, and he did not send any petition or appeal. And well, after the gentleman had distributed to all that they asked, there were five pounds over, and, and uh, there were five pounds left over, and so they considered what they should do with the money. Well, said one, there is a a Mr. Spurgeon, a good minister, he stands in need of five pounds. Oh, said another, don't send him five pounds. I will put five to it. I know him. He is a worthy man. No, said another, don't send him ten pounds. I will give another five pounds if someone else will put a fourth five to it. The next morning came a letter to grandmother with nine pence to pay. A grandmother did not like to pay out nine pence for a letter but there were 20 pounds in it. And as my grandfather opened that letter and pulled out the money, he said to his wife, now, can't you trust God about an old cow? (laughs) The psalmist said in Psalm 37, verse 25, I have been young and now am old, yet have I not seen the righteous forsaken or his seed begging bread. God meets our physical needs. But God also provides for our emotional needs. 
You know, love is more than an emotion. It's an action of my will under the direction of God. And the Bible says in verse 8, but because the Lord loved you, and because he would keep the oath which he had sworn unto your fathers, hath the Lord brought you out with a mighty hand and redeemed you out of a house of bondmen from the hand of Pharaoh, king of Egypt. John 3.16, we quoted this this morning, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. Listen, I'm glad. I, I'm just glad that I can meet people and tell them that God loves them. That's a wonderful blessing. I, I remember when I uh, first was uh, in my second year at Faithway uh, Baptist College of Canada, we went to, um, I was uh, helping at a church in New York State. And the pastor there uh, was uh, the son of a friend of mine in the college. And uh, the, the father had just become the pastor, did not know much about the church. And, uh, you know, I, I, was, I was a young man and, and uh, I was there to preach and to lead singing and to help in any way that I could. And uh, I remember I was standing in front of the congregation and I, I sang with them, Jesus loves me, this I know. And I made the statement, I'm glad that we can tell our children that God loves them. And uh, this man came up to me after the service. Uh, little did I know that he was Calvinistic in his doctrines. In fact, the pastor later resigned from that church because he found out later that the whole church was Calvinistic in their doctrine. But that man looked at me and said, I can never, I could never tell my children that God loves them because I don't know. This is what he said, because I don't know if God really loves them. That's sad. The Bible teaches us that God loves the world. And there's not a person you'll meet that God doesn't love. I'm glad that Jesus proved his love on the cross. I'm glad that I can tell others that God loves them. And here, speaking to the children of Israel in Jeremiah 31, 3, the Bible says, The Lord hath appeared of old unto me, saying, Yea, I have loved thee with an everlasting love. Therefore, with loving kindness have I drawn thee. You know, if we look to men for encouragement, we will become discouraged. We're all changeable. We all change, and we're not perfect. But yet, when we look at the cross, we see a perfect Savior. We see His compassion. They fail not. We see that His love endures. We see that His Spirit comforts. And it ought to encourage us to know that God loves me and that love never changes. A little girl's mom had just died with cancer and she was scared in the evenings at night. And so she crawled into bed with her dad. She grabbed his face with her little hand and said, Daddy, is your face toward me? And he said, yes, dear. She said, okay, I can sleep now. I'm glad that God's face is toward us. I'm glad he loves us and cares about us. He meets our needs, the provision, the, the physical provisions, the emotional provisions. But I'm glad also that he provides the spiritual needs of our life. Our spiritual substance comes from the word of God. And if you ignore the Bible and don't read the Bible then you become spiritually starved of the truth to help you to thrive as a Christian. Psalm 119 verse 89 says, Forever, O Lord, thy word is settled in heaven. Psalm 119 verse 138 says, Thy testimonies that thou hast commanded are righteous and very faithful. I love that. And very faithful. God's word will fill us up it will meet the spiritual needs of our heart. I think about the woman at the well had a spiritual need. I was preaching a sermon one time and I said, the woman in the well. She's not in the well, she's just at the well. <laughs> if she was in the well, she would not only have a spiritual need, but also a physical need. 
<laughs> you know, she had a spiritual need, and Jesus met that need. And God's word is still meeting needs. We thank God that he provides our physical needs, our emotional needs, and also he provides our spiritual needs. All right, I'll be done. Third point here. He is faithful in his promises. He's faithful in his promises. Know therefore that the Lord thy God, he is God, the faithful God, which keepeth covenant and mercy with them that love him and keep his commandments to a thousand generations and repayeth them that hate him to their face to destroy them. He will not be slack to him that hateth him. He will repay him to his face. The Bible says that God is the faithful God. He keepeth covenant and mercy. God is a faithful God. And he is faithful in his promises. God's promise to save is a big deal to us. We... we, would confidently say, when I die, I'm going to heaven because that's what God says. And that's, that's faith and that's true. God will eternally save us because of his promise. But I find it interesting how Christians can believe by faith that God will, will save them, but they struggle with the day-to-day trusting God in their life. And God wants us to, to have faith in his promises. And we're grateful for his promise to save, Hebrews 7, verse 24. But this man, because he continueth ever, hath an unchangeable priesthood. That's a wonderful thought, an unchangeable priesthood. Wherefore, he is able also to save them to the uttermost that come unto God by him, seeing he ever liveth to make intercession for them. There's not a sinner that Jesus cannot save. His promise to save is very much alive today in our world. Our world is changing at such a rapid pace, and yet I'm glad that he is still an unchangeable priesthood. I'm glad that he still offers his promise to save. And people can come to Jesus today and have eternal life and have a home in heaven. His salvation will not change. His promise is faithful. Not only his promise to save, but I think his promise to keep. His promise to keep. Second Timothy chapter 1, verse 12 says, For the which cause I also suffer these things. Nevertheless, I am not ashamed. For I know whom I have believed. By the way, it's not who I have believed. It's, it's here, it's not what I have believed. It's whom I have believed. His faith and trust is in Christ. And I am persuaded that he is able to keep that which I've committed unto him against that day. I'm glad that we are eternally secure in the Lord. That he has the promise to save and the promise to keep. And also he gives us the promise to forgive. If we confess our sins, he is faithful. He's faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. I love that expression. He's faithful. It means he'll do it again and again and again and again. And if you're a sinner, like me, then you need him to forgive you again and again and again. And he is just. He's justified. He has every right to do it because of his shed blood. The Bible says he gives us the promise to forgive. So God is faithful in his personality. God is faithful in his provision. And God is faithful in his promise. And he invites us today to abide in him. Let's pray together. Lord, thank you so much for your word. And I pray that you would help us, Lord, to recognize your faithfulness in our lives. Lord, we have burdens, we have needs. And uh, Lord, we can run to you for that help and that direction and guidance in our life. Lord, help us to be faithful to you. Help us to to, uh, keep uh, walking closer and nearer to you in our life. Forgive us where we have failed you. Lord, help us to grow and to learn. And we pray it in Jesus' name. Amen.
Let's take our hymn books tonight. Number 40, Great is Thy Faithfulness. Number 40, if you're able, let's stand together and we'll sing out on that first verse as I lead you. Great is Thy faithfulness, O God, my Father, on that first verse. you. Thank you for being here tonight. Have a wonderful week. Remember Wednesday, our Bible study, seven o'clock. You are dismissed. Hey, it's Pastor Burns again. Thank you so much for watching our live stream today. Before you leave, I want to ask you an important question. You know, I believe anytime you hear the word of God, it brings us to a place of decision. You have to decide, are you going to listen to God or are you going to ignore what he has to say for our life. Now the greatest decision that you could ever make is to know for sure that heaven is your eternal home. The Bible teaches us that we have all sinned against God. There is none righteous, no, not one. All of us are separated from him. And because of that, one day we will die. The Bible says that after death will come the judgment. And we want to make sure that when we die, we go to heaven to be with the Lord. Now, salvation is not found in ourselves. It's not found in being good, or it's not found in religion, or a denomination, or anything like that. Salvation is only found in Jesus Christ. God sent his son in John 3:16, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. God sent his son into this world so that you could have eternal life. If you believe the gospel, the death, the burial, and the resurrection of Jesus Christ, and you believe that Jesus died for you, would you call out to his name today? Would you ask him to save you? The Bible teaches us that for whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord, shall be saved. You could pray something like this, Lord, I know I'm a sinner. I know I deserve hell, but you died for me to give me eternal life. I believe your gospel. I believe your message. Save me. Take my sins away. Now, it's not about words and a prayer. 
It's about a belief in the heart. And if you truly believe the gospel and you called out to God for salvation, then the Bible says you are a Christian. We'd love to hear from you. You can go to kitchenerbaptist.org backslash decision. Fill out the easy form and send it to us so that we can send you resources to help you grow in your new found faith. Christian, and when we hear the word of God, we also have to decide. What is God speaking to you about today? Would you say yes to the Lord? Whether it's to forsake a sin, whether it's to follow him in baptism or church membership, or whatever God is doing in your life, would you nod your head and say, yes, Lord, I'll do it. I'll go, I'll follow. Would you say yes to the Lord today? That's the greatest thing in the Christian life that we could ever do. Thank you so much for joining us for our live stream. I hope that you'll join us next time here at Kitchener Baptist Church. Hey, it's Pastor Burns again. Thank you so much for watching our live stream today. Before you leave, I want to ask you an important question. You know, I believe anytime you hear the word of God, it brings us to a place of decision. You have to decide, are you going to listen to God or are you going to ignore what he has to say for our life? Now, the greatest decision that you could ever make is to know for sure that heaven is your eternal home. The Bible teaches us that we have all sinned against God. There is none righteous, no, not one. All of us are separated from him. And because of that, one day we will die. The Bible says that after death will come the judgment. And we want to make sure that when we die, we go to heaven to be with the Lord. Now, salvation is not found in ourselves. It's not found in being good or it's not found in religion or a denomination or anything like that. Salvation is only found in Jesus Christ. God sent his son in John 3:16, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. God sent his son into this world so that you could have eternal life. If you believe the gospel, the death, the burial, and the resurrection of Jesus Christ, and you believe that Jesus died for you, would you call out to his name today? Would you ask him to save you? The Bible teaches us that for whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. You could pray something like this, Lord, I know I'm a sinner. I know I deserve hell but you died for me to give me eternal life. I believe your gospel. I believe your message. Save me, take my sins away. Now it's not about words and a prayer. It's about a belief in the heart. And if you truly believe the gospel and you called out to God for salvation, then the Bible says you are a Christian. We'd love to hear from you. You can go to kitchenerbaptist.org backslash decision. Fill out the easy form and send it to us so that we can send you resources to help you grow in your new found faith. Christian, and when we hear the word of God, we also have to decide. What is God speaking to you about today? Would you say yes to the Lord? Whether it's to forsake a sin, whether it's to follow him in baptism or church membership, or whatever God is doing in your life, would you nod your head and say, yes, Lord, I'll do it, I'll go, I'll follow. Would you say yes to the Lord today? That's the greatest thing in the Christian life that we could ever do. Thank you so much for joining us for our live stream. I hope that you'll join us next time here at Kitchener Baptist Church. It's Pastor Burns again. Thank you so much for watching our live stream today. Before you leave, I want to ask you an important question. 
You know, I believe anytime you hear the word of God, it brings us to a place of decision. You have to decide, are you going to listen to God or are you going to ignore what he has to say for our life? Now, the greatest decision that you could ever make is to know for sure that heaven is your eternal home. The Bible teaches us that we have all sinned against God. There is none righteous, no, not one. All of us are separated from him. And because of that, one day we will die. The Bible says that after death will come the judgment. And we want to make sure that when we die, we go to heaven to be with the Lord. Now, salvation is not found in ourselves. It's not found in being good, or it's not found in religion, or the, uh, a denomination, or anything like that. Salvation is only found in Jesus Christ. God sent his son in John 3:16, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. God sent his son into this world so that you could have eternal life. If you believe the gospel, the death, the burial, and the resurrection of Jesus Christ, and you believe that Jesus died for you, would you call out to his name today? Would you ask him to save you? The Bible teaches us that for whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. You could pray something like this, Lord, I know I'm a sinner. I know I deserve hell, but you died for me to give me eternal life. I believe your gospel. I believe your message. Save me. Take my sins away. Now, it's not about words and a prayer. It's about a belief in the heart. And if you truly believe the gospel and you called out to God for salvation, then the Bible says you are a Christian. We'd love to hear from you. You can go to kitchenerbaptist.org backslash decision fill out the easy form and send it to us so that we can send you resources to help you grow in your new found faith. Christian, and when we hear the word of God, we also have to decide. What is God speaking to you about today? Would you say yes to the Lord? Whether it's to forsake a sin, whether it's to follow him in baptism or church membership or whatever God is doing in your life, would you nod your head and say, yes, Lord, I'll do it. I'll go. I'll follow. Would you say yes to the Lord today? That's the greatest thing in the Christian life that we could ever do. Thank you so much for joining us for our live stream. I hope that you'll join us next time here at Kitchener Baptist Church. It's Pastor Burns again. Thank you so much for watching our live stream today. Before you leave, I want to ask you an important question. You know, I believe anytime you hear the word of God, it brings us to a place of decision. You have to decide, are you going to listen to God or are you going to ignore what he has to say for our life? Now, the greatest decision that you could ever make is to know for sure that heaven is your eternal home. The Bible teaches us that we have all sinned against God. There is none righteous, no, not one. All of us are separated from him. And because of that, one day we will die. The Bible says that after death will come the judgment. And we want to make sure that when we die, we go to heaven to be with the Lord. Now, salvation is not found in ourselves. It's not found in being good or it's not found in religion or a denomination or anything like that. Salvation is only found in Jesus Christ. God sent his son in John 3:16, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. God sent his son into this world so that you could have eternal life. If you believe the gospel, the death, the burial, and the resurrection of Jesus Christ, and you believe that Jesus died for you, would you call out to his name today?